somehow I figured out that there are people out there who, uh, if you wake them up in the middle of the night, can't name all of the Roman emperors from Augustus to the crisis of the 3rd century. So I decided to accomplish a dubious task of making a short video, uh, a relatively short video, that will briefly cover all the history of the Principate up until the black hole that followed the rule of Severus Alexander. Earlier period, before Augustus, is a separate thing that requires a separate attention. And the crisis of the 3rd century? Well, dragons live there, and you should proceed with caution. We're gonna do it some other time, I guess. But after Severus Alexander, all more or less trustworthy sources just vanish, and we're dealing with a total mess. Okay, uh, this is uh, what I'm gonna do. We're going from one emperor to another. I give a very brief summary of the person and an overview of his reign. I also mention the primary sources now and then, uh, because this is important for understanding what we're dealing with. And we don't really have many primary sources, two or three usually, uh, which is a huge problem in itself. Obviously, I will try to present everything as objectively as possible. And obviously, I will fail miserably. Because I'm biased. Everyone is biased. And all of the historians are biased. Uh, they just usually pretend that they're not. And if they are employed by the governments, uh, they are practically paid for the bias. So. Anyway, let's get started. Augustus, the first emperor. And when I say emperor, it is a convention. The word imperator doesn't mean the same thing as the modern derivative, the emperor. This title had been in use for a long time, even before the reign of Augustus. It is something like a military commander-in-chief. Uh, in time, it just became more or less exclusive for the ruler of the state, uh, who pretended that he was not really a monarch, uh, but a first citizen of the Roman Republic. Any general technically could be hailed as the imperator uh, by the troops, uh, but, uh, well, since the time of Augustus, it was basically a treason. Augustus reformed the Roman state and created a system we call the Principate, a state that formally is a Roman Republic, but it is led by the first citizen, or a princeps, uh, that's the origin of the modern word prince. And this first citizen is most definitely not a king, wink wink. Uh, Romans hated kings, uh, it's a traditional thing. Augustus was born as Gaius Octavius, and he was a great nephew of Gaius Julius Caesar. Uh, Caesar was killed in the year 44 BC, and in his will, he adopted Gaius Octavius as his son and heir, who became the new Gaius Julius Caesar, or more precisely, Gaius Julius Caesar Octavianus. In this period of his life, he is usually referred to as Octavian by the historians. Octavian, who was a very, very young man, managed to get the loyalty of Caesar's legions and secure an alliance with Mark Antony, uh, who was more or less his primary political rival. Uh, the alliance also included another prominent ally of Caesar, uh, Marcus Aemilius Lepidus, who was a bit of a counterweight. Uh, for the sake of simplicity, uh, it was kind of like what Caesar was in the unofficial triumvirate of uh, Pompey, Crassus, and, well, Caesar. Uh, this new alliance is called the Second Triumvirate, uh, but officially it was the first. The newly established triumvirate uh, had to deal with the crisis. Uh, the anti-Caesarian faction, the faction that killed Caesar, uh, didn't recognize any of these people and was willing to fight. It was led by Marcus Junius Brutus and Gaius Cassius Longinus. So, civil war, once again. 
popular culture, like films, uh, downplays the importance of these events and presents things like, well, Brutus and Cassius were doomed and they probably were incompetent, no match for Octavian and Antony. Uh, this is uh, simply not true. Uh, the anti-Caesarian army had a realistic shot at a victory and they fought really well. Uh, they lost the Battle of Philippi, which led to the overall defeat of the faction. But they, uh, they lost it largely to a very unfortunate turn of events and due to miscommunications. And yeah, here's some historical bias for you. Brutus and Cassius were probably much better human beings than Octavian and Antony. So if you're looking for the good guys in the Civil War, which is uh, counterproductive, then, uh, well, good guys actually lost the war. Now Octavian and Antony controlled everything and decided to split the spheres of influence. Octavian received the west, Antony the east, and Lepidus the south. And later Lepidus was sidelined anyway. Uh, Antony found his new home in Alexandria and a new wife, Cleopatra. It all eventually led to a war between his troops, uh, backed by Egypt, and the forces of Octavian, which culminated uh, with the Battle of Actium in 31 BC, which left Octavian the uncontested ruler of the Roman world. Uh, the Senate granted him the title of Augustus, and that's how he is usually called after the year 27 BC. Uh, that was the birth of the entirely new political system. The stories of intergalactic romance of Antony and Cleopatra kind of obscure to a degree uh, how exactly Octavian managed to overpower the richest country in the world, a country which recently provided him financial aid and also possessed a large army. Egypt became a part of the Roman Empire, but not quite. It became a personal domain of Octavian, and Octavian became the new pharaoh. So in Rome, he was more or less democratic, on paper, our first citizen. But in Egypt, uh, he was the god king. Augustus ruled up until his death in the year 14. So basically, he was the sole ruler of the state for more than four decades. Uh, obviously, the number of reforms uh, during this period is huge, and you just can't cover them in a few minutes' time. Uh, he also expanded the Roman Empire, adding territories in Asia, Germania, and uh, Dalmatia. Augustus didn't have sons, so at different periods of his reign, he had different succession plans involving his relatives. But he lived a long life, and his designated heirs, uh, which included his nephew and his grandchildren, uh, died before him. In the end, he had to adopt his stepson, a prominent general Tiberius, with whom he had a, a very complicated relationship. But since plan A for succession failed, and then plan B failed as well, and then plan C, uh, that left him with the favorite candidate of his wife, Livia, mother of Tiberius. The sources for the reign of Augustus are a bit more numerous compared to later periods. Uh, we have two main Roman histories, Suetonius and Cassius Dio, but as an addition to them, in the case of Augustus, we have stuff like his own account, uh, Res Gestae Divi Augusti, uh, we have works of uh, historians uh, Valerius Paterculus and Lucius Aeneas Florus. Uh, you can find something in Plutarch. Uh, so yeah, it is, as always, not much, but it is uh, something. It is not the situation of, uh, for example, Gaius Caligula, uh, when there are only two primary sources. Uh, many people just don't understand that uh, there is a serious problem uh, with the sources on antiquity. You come to the bookstore and see shelves of modern works about this emperor and that emperor, the overall history of this period and that period. And it kind of conceals the fact uh, that uh, they all mostly get their information from like uh, a couple of sources. And, you know, 
inscriptions and occasional references. 